learning check three coming at you here. These first two, I'm gonna answer in the next slide. The third one, um, the right ventricle is gonna have lower pressures. So particularly that systolic, that maximum that it gets to, um, both diastolic in the left and right reach close to zero actually, um, but systolic is gonna be higher, pressures higher in the left ventricle than the right. For the actual pressures in the ventricle, we talked about this last week with the cardiac cycle. And I think I showed you this image as a preview of what was to come. And now it's here. So here is a graph of pressure over circulation, right? Going from um, left ventricle out to the systemic cir circulation and back to the right atrium again. And again, these measures are the left ventricle only. That's that high pressure circuit. That's what we just use as our example. Pressures in the pulmonary circuit aren't gonna reach quite as high because we're not having to pump as far away. We don't have to pump throughout the entire body. We're just going to the lungs. And today we'll refine what, how pressure, um, the really the force of pressure, what that means. So here's left ventricle, close to zero at diastolic and up to 120 for systolic. That's the left ventricle. The arteries don't go down to zero. So pressure within circulation, our systemic circulation is always going to be above zero. And this is really important. So pressure is initiated by that heart, the pump of the heart. Um, it's also influenced by blood volume, regulated by the nervous and endocrine system. And pressure matters because it allows for flow. It is the force that allows blood to flow throughout both pulmonary and systemic circulation. Adequate pressure is necessary to maintain this system, maintain this flow of these closed circuits, these closed tubes. So we're also gonna have resistance as we go through these tubes. So the heart needs to be able to, to work and um, resistance, as, even as resistance maybe changes, which we'll get back into. So we'll talk more about the factors that influence blood pressure and therefore blood, blood flow. But what I want to emphasize here is that maintaining pressure is really, really important. It is a homeostatic variable, right? And we'll talk a little bit about too high can cause problems, um, damage to vessels and the heart working real, real hard. But you also, hypo, low blood pressure is also a problem. Your tissues are not getting the blood that they need. And you know everything that blood does for you. So when we're talking about blood pressure, we're gonna be talking about it throughout circulation. When you hear blood pressure, you're gonna hear um, what you hear like the doctor is you know 120 over 80. That's measured right here at the arteries. So I'm just gonna sh show this again another time. I wanna show you it here to start with. This is how you measure blood pressure. Um, it's the brachial artery here that is used to maintain blood, to, to measure blood pressure. And we, we cut off circulation to it, and then we me can measure the force of the blood flowing through. I'll come back to this in more detail. We're actually gonna do it in lab, um, and it makes a whole lot more sense when you do it. But we're gonna measure um, the pressure of blood that's trying to push through that brachial artery, but then is a pretty good measurement of the pressure near our like aorta. Um, we're not gonna measure right in there because that is pretty invasive. So before we go into more about blood pressure, I want to back up and talk to you about pressure. If you've had physics, this is going to be a little bit more review. So pressure is force over an area. It is a force and area matters as well. Um, the area that you're pushing down on. The example of this is if you stomp on someone or step on someone with a like regular shoe, it's gonna hurt a lot less than stomping on someone with a high heel. That low surface area is going to increase pressure, even if the force is the same, your weight of the, you stepping on that person is the same. This is the principle behind the bed of nails. You can lie down on a bed of nails and not get poked or hurt um, because your, your weight is distributed across a large surface area. 
This example here is how air pressure is measured. And it's a similar idea. So millimeters of mercury is one unit of blood pr of pressure. And that comes historically from using a mercury thermo th barometer, a mercury measurer called a barometer. Barometer is a, a tool that measures pressure. You have baroreceptors in your body that we'll talk about next week. Pressure. So in this example, air pressure, which you don't really notice most of the time, right? But there is a pressure in the air, pushes down on this barometer and causes um, a force up due to this um, barometer and that's measured by whatever. Um, one ATM atmosphere is what we are at um, sea level. I think it's 760 millimeters of mercury. We're going to come back to this and see it when we talk about the respiratory system because the pressure of the atmosphere is really important for how our lungs function. It's not important right now besides to give you an example of how what pressure is, force over an area. So then if we're talking about flow, this is one way to measure, and this is the thing we care about with flow. So gases and liquids, so this is going to be, we'll use the same principle for the respiratory system, but liquids, blood, that's what we're talking about right now, but it's true for other liquids as well. That's why you may have learned about this in physics class. Gases and liquids move due to bulk flow, due to, due to pressure differences. So this schematic here, really simple tube. Um, we're just using a tube here because like we wanna look at flow. So if it's in a tube, we can look at flow. It's also pretty convenient because we'll wanna have tubes in our body. And pressure one and pressure two um, are gonna be different. So if we have high pressure here and low pressure here, we're gonna have flow. So this difference a difference in pressure, this is change in, is going to allow for flow. And this term bulk flow is referring to relatively large volumes. Um, like for example, the tubes in our body. Um, so in our body, well, I'll just do this again, I'll do it again now. What, what is another term we can use for P1 is pressure in the arteries, P2, we may talk about this as pressure in the veins and that pressure difference near the heart and far away at the end of circulation. I shouldn't say near the heart, the beginning of circulation and at the end, as we've gone through circulation, a difference in pressure exists and that's what's gonna allow for flow. Here is an example of that with some numbers. So we've got two tubes here, which way are things gonna flow? If at all here, no flow. There's no pressure difference here. We're not gonna have flow. This would be like millimeters of mercury. This tube here, it's gonna go this way. Why? Because there is a difference in pressure over here versus over here. So a tube can flow either way, right? In our body, we wanna make sure we're not flowing backwards. So we're always gonna keep arterial pressure higher than venous pressure. The other thing that affects flow besides a difference in pressure is going to be resistance. So flow, now this equation is different. This flow is dependent on a difference in pressure. That's what I just told you. Flow depends on a difference in pressure. So for example, P1 minus P2, the initial pressure minus this um, ending pressure at the end of the tube. But now there's something else to consider, of course, resistance. This, if you know Ohm's law from physics, this actually is Ohm's law. Ohm's law says that um, current is voltage over resistance. Same thing, actually. So this is actually based on Ohm's law. Um, and again, what, so first let's do, if you want to increase flow, how can you do that? You could either increase P1 you could decrease P2 or you could decrease resistance. The resistance we're talking about is gonna be vascular resistance. 
So, um, and I'll talk about the factors that affect that and really what that means, but it's gonna be um, resistance to flow. So either something in the vessel that's causing um, flow not to occur or like viscosity, so thick blood is another thing. Um, I'll go into factors that affect resistance in a moment. So again, this example here, this might be pressure in the arteries and pressure in the veins that allow for flow this way. So flow in our body is really gonna be dependent on the difference in pressure across circulation divided by the resistance where in our entire like systemic circulation. And of course we'll have a special name for that. So resistance, total resistance, total. Okay, I'm gonna pause there and go into how this applies to what the factors that affect resistance and then how this applies to our circulatory system in the next video.